Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you five ways of using Chorus in Ableton. You might be familiar with the Chorus Ensemble effect, but there is so much more to explore in Ableton when it comes to Chorus. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about Ableton coming up. If you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our Beginner to Advanced Live 12 Start to Finish course and make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. And to see all of that, check the links in the video description. All right, so let's get started. All right, so technique number one is of course using the stock chorus ensemble effect, which is the easiest way of getting chorus. You just search for chorus in the audio effects tab. It's right here, chorus ensemble. And this is the only native readily available here from this audio effects tab, uh, standard chorus effect. So we've got three sections here. We've got classic uh, with two sine waves, which are modulating our signal. And basically how this works is we are modulating our signal and pitch. And maybe it's easier if we get started with this vibrato section. And before we uh, proceed, let me just open up this sample. This is what we're playing. This is dry. Okay, so we just have a simple guitar chord. And I'm just going to turn on vibrato, just so you can hear what it's doing. So it's obviously just fluctuating up and down in pitch uh, according to our rate and amount. If we increase the rate, decrease the amount, we get this nice pitch drift. And if we increase the amount, slow down the rate, we get a lo-fi slow vinyl-like pitch drift. Of course, it would have to be way more subtle. But what happens in uh, classic and ensemble mode is that basically we double or triple our signal. So you can see that in vibrato we just have one signal. In classic there are two sine waves, so we are doubling our signal. And in ensemble we are tripling our signal. And the difference, of course, is the sort of offset in pitch of the second signal. Here, if we go all the way up, uh, we get two detuned signals. Right, and this is the most basic way of achieving chorus. You will probably hear that the sound gets stereo, and of course you can still control stereo if we take a utility after this chorus and we lower the width. We can sort of sum these two left and right channels back to mono. Uh, there are some other useful features. For instance, we have high pass. If you'd just like to process the highs and leave the lows untouched, you can also drag down the dry wet. So this can be a bit more subtle. Also, we've got feedback. So this can create a more intense effect here. And we've also got warmth, which in the higher ranges here is going to produce some uh, saturation. So another example we could use is, for instance, this bell. And let's just also use a classic chorus on this one. This is dry. And then we can add chorus. So you'll probably notice that if we double this way our signal and we mix it in with our dry signal, we sort of get three signals. We get the dry signal, which doesn't change in pitch, and then we get two fluctuating signals uh, on the left and right channels. This makes our sound sometimes even bigger. So sometimes it's going to sound even more lush if we decrease the dry wet. Let's take a look at Chorus Ensemble. And in the Ensemble section, we've got um, three additional signals and we can mix that in with our original signal so we can have up to four uh, kind of pitches at the same time. So let's hear this jazz chord once again with ensemble. And this is more intense because we have four signals now. Uh, if we go all the way up with dry wet, Let's listen to some bells, dry. 
and I'll enable Ensemble. Yeah, so this nicely triples our audio and detunes it to make it really lush sounding. Okay, uh, next up, we've got the Legacy Chorus, which is this effect right here. And to access this, you simply go to Packs, you go to Core Library, Devices, Audio Effects, and here you will find Legacy. And under Legacy, you just go to Chorus and drop Chorus right here. And this is an older version of Chorus that isn't readily available just from the audio effects tab right here, but it's still really usable. And what I love about this one is that we've got this mod matrix. So, so I like to set my mod matrix sort of in this kind of curve. So the X axis is the rate and the Y axis is the amount. So I like to first start with the amount somewhere like this. For instance, I like to sort of overdo it to set the right speed. Then I take down the amount. And if I'd also like to have a bit of that strong mono signal, I can take down the dry wet. And in a nutshell, this is how I use Chorus Legacy. Uh, you've also got feedback. But yeah, this modulation matrix sometimes makes it a bit easier to dial in the right settings, at least for me. So yeah, we get a bit more stereo signal this way. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth technique for today, and this is the shifter, which is not a usual chorus effect, but it's really effective at chorus. So let's give our sample once again a quick listen. To me, it sounds beautiful, and how it's achieved is really simple. Let me just drop a simple shifter with the default settings here. So by default, it does nothing. We can take down the pitch or take it up. What we are using for a chorus is this LFO. So if we increase amount, we get vibrato, but instead of a sine wave, we get a triangle wave. And I would even prefer the triangle wave. It's, to me, it's in some cases, it sounds a bit better. So we've got the triangle wave, and then we can uh, change the mode from spin to phase, and what will happen is that the left and right channels will be sort of the opposites here on the pitch spectrum, sort of. So let's give this a lesson. If we increase the rate, decrease the amount. Or we can make it subtle with a slow rate. And what's cool is that now we can dial the dry wet back down and this starts sounding even better this way. So without and with. And what we can also do is tweak this phase. So yeah, in my opinion, this just sounds beautiful. So we, you can do a lot of different things here and you've got a bit more flexibility than in standard chorus effects, in my opinion. Uh, you've got, for instance, a shape control where you can sort of shape your triangle wave. Or you can choose an analog triangle wave. Or you can choose a random sort of waveform. So there's so much more to explore right here in Shifter. And let's just give this an example. We've got a simple Shifter setup and we're going to be using it on this uh, guitar sample right here. I feel like we've got so much more life here in this signal just by adding this subtle shifter. The last technique would be to actually 
double your shifters and use a utility in conjunction. So this way you can create simple racks. You just group your effects, select all and press Ctrl or Command and G. And this way you place them in an audio effect rack, then you can save them right here. But what I'm doing here is basically we're doing the same effect as in the first one, but we are adding another one on top of it. Our default signal, then and what we can do is also add another one, which is going to be faster. And now let's just dial this back down. So without, and with these two shifters, and then we can also dial down the width right here to sum it up back to more or less mono even if we take it all the way down, we still get a nice amount of detune. So we can take a look at an example. We've got this electric piano sample right here. And let's play this one with our shifters. With shifters, I feel like this is kind of a hack and you can achieve a lot just by dialing in the right modulation of pitch right here. All right, I hope you found any of these techniques useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the Beginner to Advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also see the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. And to see all of that, check the links in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. And if if you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment and I will see you in the next ones.